In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to transform a shape or an image from one slide into the image or shape in the succeeding slide using the currently coolest transition available in PowerPoint 365, the Morph Transition. Hello everyone, especially to my fellow teachers and educators out there. This is Sir Z from Teach Train Transform where I do teaching and teacher related discussions and some vlogging on the side sometimes with my wife whenever she's available to create contents with me. So we got here a PowerPoint presentation pulled up. Everything is blank so that you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing on the screen. So the first thing we're going to practice is how to apply the more transition to transform a shape from one slide into a different shape located or inserted in the other slide. So since we're gonna deal with two shapes, we're going to add one more slide in this workspace. I don't know how it is called, I just, I'm just calling it workspace. Alright, so let's get rid of all of this stuff that is clattered on our bank template. There you go. So let's go to slide number one. Insert whatever shape you would like to practice on. This is the supposedly the original shape of the item okay I'm going to select for example a triangle go to slide number two and insert whatever shape that you would like the triangle to end up with for me I'm going to choose an arrow so from triangle it will transform itself seamlessly into an arrow as if the two of them are inside the same slide okay that's the difference with more transition with the basic transitions that we have in PowerPoint that we've been using ever since, they are working in between two different slides. So how they work is that one slide is presented and then it gets kicked out and the next slide will be inserted on the screen. But in this case, the second slide will be placed on top of the previous slide. That's why there is a seamless transition between the objects involved in the transformation. So first, apply the morph transition on the final slide where the final shape is inserted that is on this practice slide number two go to transitions at the top here in the menu bar transition and look for the transition called morph if this is not showing here just in case it doesn't pull down the menu for the other options and look for more but in my case it is always located here. So I'm going to apply it on slide number two. Take note that if I replay the uh, transition, there's nothing special about it, right? It, it looks like a basic transition. We see the triangle, it disappears, and then comes in the next slide, which is slide number two with the arrow. That's because we're not yet done. The reason why it's still working as a basic transition is because the PowerPoint program detects these two slides containing two different items. If you're going to click and hold the Alt tab on your keyboard and then press F10, you will pull up this panel that is on the right side. This panel will be showing you all the items inserted in a particular slide, in this case, slide number two. And as you can see on the panel, it only has one item listed, and that is this arrow shape that the program detected. And it says here that the name of this shape is arrow right three. If we're going to check the name of this shape on slide number number one it is called isosceles triangle 5 so obviously they are indeed two different shapes right so to make them appear to PowerPoint as one and the same we're going to give them the same exact name but the rule is you will need to apply it on the slide where the final shape is inserted and always start with two exclamation points uh, with the name right so we go to number two slide, select the arrow, double click the name of that shape on the panel that is on the right side, type in two exclamation points, and then add the word that you will give as their name. Say, um, let's just type in the word shape. There you go. So this time, it is now called shape with two exclamation points at the beginning of the word. However, on slide number one, it, it, this item is still called isosceles triangle five. So let's go back to slide number two. And just to make sure that we're not gonna make any mistake, I'll just copy the name we gave for this item. Go to slide number one, double click the name that is for this shape, just in case that there are other 
items inserted in this slide and then simply paste the name that we took from slide number two now take a look how this morph will work on these two different shapes it is now directly and seamlessly transforming from the triangle shape from slide number one into the shape of the arrow that is on slide number two. We will call that, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but let's call that transformation for the meantime, okay? Because the more transition will work differently on different items that I'm going to show you later on. Okay, let's do that again one more time. Let's grab or let's insert one more slide, slide number three and then insert a third shape let's say a heart just like what we did earlier if you're going to click on the item you will see the name on this panel for that selected item and it says heart 3 so let's change that to the same name that we have on slide number 4 I'm just gonna copy it just to make sure I'm getting it right double click on the name of the heart and then replace it by pasting two exclamation point and then the word shape now let's apply on slide number three the transition morph there you go all right let's see that again from triangle it will become an arrow on slide number two and from an arrow it will become a heart shape that is on slide number three as you can see it seems like we are still on the same slide with three different shapes in it there is a problem with this one though because like I said, we call this this process transformation, right? The other one I call blending. That's because there are cases that the shapes involved will not be able to physically transform into the next shape that we will use with the more transition. So what will happen is if that's the case, the slide of the final shape will simply go on top of the previous slide. So it will fade into on top of the previous slide. That will happen if you're going to use a different type of object and also this object has a different number of parts. So as you can see on slide number one, we only got one item, a shape of a triangle, no other parts included, just one part. Same with number two, just a shape, and on three, with just one part. We're going to insert one more shape with more than one part. Okay, let's look for a shape that does that has more than one part, this one. This is just a single image or a single shape. However, this one will not work with the transformation and using more transition. This shape will blend and fade in on top of this shape instead, all right? So let's try that. Even if we're going to give it the same name, like so, apply the morph transition. As you can see, the previous shape simply fades out and then the new shape on the succeeding slide fades in. So that's what will happen if either they are of two different types of objects. Let's say a shape and then a JPEG or a, a PNG, something like that or the next shape doesn't have the same number of parts. So this time, let's try to use some images, a PNG and a JPEG file. Another slide, clean up the clutter. Let's look for a PNG image. I'm gonna be using the logo of my school. So aside from being a PNG file, we also resize this image so it affected the image quality. That will also affect our, our cost problem with the more transition. Let's say we're going to transform this shape into a different image. So let's go grab, this is a JPEG file. So let's make this unique. We're not going to use the same names that we created for the first few slides. Let's give this a different name. First, of course, the two exclamation parts. And then let's say logo. All right. Let's copy that. Go to the next slide with a new and different image. And then paste the name you created for this item. Okay. So let's try to see what will happen if we're going to use the morph transition. Go to transition. Of course, select the final slide with the final image or shape. Apply morph. There you go. It's the same thing, right? It's simply paid in on top of the previous image. So that's how it works. If you are dealing or using two different types of objects or they have different number of parts, the transformation will not happen. It will simply blend. The previous object will fade out. The new object will fade in on top of the previous one. Let's try to uh, do a transformation and this time it will also change color. So let's add two more. Okay, let's insert this time. Let's work with a circle. Okay, let's say for example that this is yellow. 
on this final slide supposedly we will transform it into a thunderbolt and let's make this color red okay so from here it's not only gonna transform into a different shape it will also change into the other color and also it will move from the left going to the right side let's give this a name that we will apply to both of them start with exclamation points two of them and then what name are we going to give this any name will do okay i'm just gonna type or copy go to the final transformation slide select the item involved change the name into the same name you applied for the initial shape and then let's see what will happen if we will apply the morph transition so once again let's take a look at that there you go okay next example what about if we're dealing with multiple items inserted in a particular slide so for example let's add one more slide this is now slide number 10 on our practice let's insert say a blue triangle a red circle that is on that side this time a picture let's use the same pictures we used a while ago so that's my logo my picture for example at the middle and then one more picture or image a jpeg file which is the logo of this channel so what we are going to do here is that how we apply trans the uh, the morph transition for a particular item in a slide with multiple objects inserted on this particular slide if you're going to check the right panel or the panel on the right side powerpoint detected five items all in all in this particular slide so for example we're going to transform this blue triangle into this red circle of course the red circle should not be here yet so let's duplicate the slide so that it will have the same items and it will be on the same exact positions on the slide number one which is our initial slide the circle should not be here yet on slide number 10 the triangle should no longer be part of this slide so let's go to slide number one click the item and you will notice that whatever object you click on in this slide will be highlighted on the panel that is on the right so this is the name of that triangle so let's replace that with a different name and always start with two exclamation points let's say try okay triangle copy that go to the next slide select the object for the end transformation it says oval so we're gonna replace that highlighted name by pasting the triangle name we gave for this triangle the blue triangle let's go to the slide number 10 and apply the transition morph all right let's see that again okay so as you can see it passed underneath my picture that is okay at least the morph transition worked when we use morph transition, we are not actually working on two different slides. We're working on the object that are on those slides. So let's say I would like this transformation from triangle to circle to go over my picture that is in the middle. Okay, so let's go to slide number 9. Send this picture back. Let's do the same thing with this one. Send this picture back. So let's check if this circle from the triangle will go over my picture okay there you go all right so that's how it works so how or how you're gonna do it if there are multiple items that is on the slide that you are working on using the more transition so now for our last activity for this particular video we already created a transformation between the triangle into a red circle what about at the same time this logo will go underneath my picture end up here on this spot and transform into this jpeg image we can also do that so we're gonna have the blue triangle pass over my picture and transform into a red triangle try a uh, red circle ending up on the lower right of the presentation well at the same time this logo which is at the upper right corner go under my picture end up on the left hand side or left corner transform into this image same procedure first of course remove the image that is supposedly not yet there in this case on slide number nine is it is the jpeg image or picture on slide number 10 the uh, logo should no longer be there so let's go back to slide number nine click it look for the highlighted name on the right side panel give it a name starting with two exclamation points and then let's say circle let's copy that click outside so that it will be applied go to slide number 10 hit the image it is highlighting picture number 10 let's replace that by pasting the name we gave the logo on slide number nine so let's see what will happen you will 
notice the logo did not pass underneath the picture so just reorganize it move the logo towards the back on slide number nine maybe let's do that as well on this image on slide number 10 okay let's check all right so that is how you can use the morph transition not only to transform one image to another but also to move them to a different spot in your presentation and even change their color thank you so much for spending your time with me once again this is Sir Z. for the meantime see you again in the next videos class dismissed